I'm very much a fan of luxury, but I'm noticing myself leaning more into luxury minimalism. Two major events have happened on YouTube that kind of pushed me into the luxury minimalism camp 100%. My name is Kathy, if we haven't met, and I talk about fashion and luxury. Luxury minimalism to me is more about curation. If you've seen my previous closet tour video, I'm not a minimalist at all when it comes to clothing or any other items, but I am about curation and not having a ton of things. I do not lack for any clothing or shoes or handbags. I'm trying to get to a point where I'm like, what do I really need? What do I really enjoy? A lot of my videos are curating lists of items, whether to buy or for collections. I love doing things like that because curation allows me to take a collection and see what are the things that stand out? What are the things that I see value in? What are the things that will actually fit into my closet? As I mentioned in the introduction, there were two main events that happened that pushed me all the way into luxury minimalism. First event was a video I saw from Purse on Fleet. She's, I believe, an Australian YouTuber and she had a video about Hermes and how Hermes basically made her cry and she's done with Hermes. Long story short, she's a luxury YouTuber, loves Hermes, has had a Birkin before. She was in search of her one of her Holy Grail Birkins. She got a little pushy with the sales associate. According to her, Hermes contacted her and said, you can no longer contact this sales associate. You're not banned from Hermes, but game over with the sales associate. In the video, she was super upset with Hermes, I, also with the sales associate. I, I think she thought she was playing the game correctly, but unfortunately, I think she missed a lot of just social cues. The video is crazy. I'll, I'll link it in the description. I couldn't watch the whole thing because it was one of those videos where somebody was so unaware of how badly they were behaving. I think she said, this is how I thought I had to behave in order to get my bag because I saw other people getting the thing that I wanted and I wasn't getting it, so I had to be more pushy. I think she lost side of the fact that the person that she was dealing with that was to try to get her Hermes bag was actually a person who just worked at Hermes and didn't like live and breathe and own Hermes. This person went to work, was there to help you find a bag and went home and had a regular life. They took vacation, things like that. And I feel like she took all her frustration out on that person. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person. Luxury is about enjoyment to me. For her, it became almost about obsession, like legit. The video is 50 minutes long. Like I said, I didn't watch the whole thing, but it just kind of underscored to me how people can become obsessed. I have a couple of videos where I talk about things that are on my wish list. It's a wish list. If these things don't come true, you are not going to find me crying about this. Now, let me tell you, there's a few things that I'm very tight about. Like if I see it or I see somebody with it, I get tight. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I feel some kind of way. I'm not gonna stalk some some poor sales associate. I'm not gonna be in somebody's DMs asking if I can buy the item from them. Like there's so many things that you hear going on. Also from this video came a lot of reaction videos where a lot of people were just talking about how how slightly unhinged she was. I have to say within the luxury community, there is a lot of, there are a lot of women like her where they just feel like I have this item and I must achieve it in order to have self-worth. Once I saw that, once I breathed that in, and once I realized like, it was like almost like scared straight, like this is the worst you can be and don't ever get here. The second video that I saw was with the YouTuber Tamara. I love her luxury content. Also, she, she travels, she goes to fashion week. Her platform is impeccable. With her, she had a major break-in. I believe she was out at an event, and while she was away from her house, these broke in and stole all of her bag. Correction, they just stole her bag. She has a very extensive Chanel and Hermes collection, and those were the majority of the bags that they stole. I believe they stole every Hermes bag and every Chanel bag except one. <laughs> the one Chanel bag that they did not steal was pretty beat up. So whoever robbed her knew what they were looking for. They were able to look at this bag and say, we're not gonna make any money off this bag, so we're leaving it. They also didn't take any of her Bottega bags, which I think is shady, but the resale value of Bottega bags is, is for another video. I'm sure she had at least 40 bags stolen, which is heartbreaking. They also stole jewelry. I believe she had at least five luxury watches stolen. She said they took 300,000 euros worth of bags and jewelry. She ended up leaving the place where she was staying and she's staying somewhere else. And the only good thing for her is I believe she had recently done a handbag video. So she has a good idea of what she owns and police are gonna be able to, to kind of look at it. A lot of these items had serial numbers. So if these things pop up on eBay or something, they're gonna be easy to track down. So how does this relate to luxury minimalism? This traumatic situation forces you to ponder what bags would I purchase if I just do start all over again. I do have a video already where I would say, what are the at least the bag styles that I would pick if I would re, if I had to restart my collection over again? If I was in her shoes, that would be where I would start. In addition to those handbag styles, I'm sure she had bags that either were 
sentimental value or that she just loved or that she used. And I think that's where the luxury minimalism side kind of goes in, where if you had to start over, what is really important? What bags do you value enough that you purchase again? And lastly, this is not even really about a YouTube video, a specific YouTube video. This is more about YouTube in general and as social media in, in, in actually. Social media has made it so easy for just regular people to flex. If you think about, like if I think about my life growing up, Celebrities were the people that owned things and flex. Of course, I do, did know some people that were rich and had had certain things, but even rich people weren't flexing the way people do now. Now that people are able to see you flex, I feel like back in the day before social media, people were flexing, but the, the flexing was maybe amongst your friend circle, amongst, you weren't flexing to the world. Social media has allowed people who are more affluent to flex. It's also, I think it's also kind of bred this feeling of inadequacy sometimes or feeling compelled of like i have to get this not that i don't even think it's in order to compare but i you you feel like in order to just meet the bar i feel like because social media has allows regular people to show to flex a lot of people feel like they look at somebody and they say well they're regular like me so if they have that i should have that and it leads to this weird comparison my friends and i are actually going to do a deep dive about this related to plastic surgery. Truthfully, I think this applies also in regards to luxury. I feel like anything that, that can be flexed on social media is, is susceptible to this, you know, comparison. I feel like there are people who are like, oh, social media doesn't bother me. Social media doesn't compel me to do anything. Unfortunately, then I would say to you, you're not using social media correctly. <laughs> because let me tell you, the beautiful things that I see on social media can call out to me in order for me to buy things. And so luxury minimalism is for me taking in all that information and then really like putting it through a filter and saying, okay, like there's a hundred things I want, but 10 things are truly things that are, are going to be useful and beautiful and fit in with my life. When most people think of minimalism, they don't think of somebody with my size of closet. But minimalism to me is more about making decisions and cutting down and getting rid of things that, that you don't value. Whatever that number for you, as I grow older, I'm definitely paring down things and realizing like there's no need for this. And that's also happening with luxury. Our minds did not evolve to be able to take in all the beauty, truthfully. It's a lot. You know, back in the day, you would see a limited amount of things. And out of those limited amount of things, you only wanted a subset of that. Well, now the sky is the limit. I can go on social media and see a million things. And then I have to force myself to only go after a subset. Those are my thoughts on luxury minimalism. Let me know what you think. And then next week I'll be back to videos where we talk about my favorite luxury items. See you later. Bye.